The surviving Boston bomb suspect, Jahar Zarnayev, stares out from his father's computer. A month and a half after the bombings, his parents still don't accept their son's guilt. They've been allowed one phone call with their son Jahar in his military hospital. His mother played their recording of that conversation to Channel 4 News. Prison authorities had forbidden them from discussing the case. This is the first time the world has heard Jahar Zanayev's voice since his arrest. His mother asks if he's in pain. You are my life, she tells him. You need to be strong. To which he replies, Please don't say anything, she sobs, repeating her son's words. She wants us to film this, but hearing it again clearly upsets her. In this phone call, which she recorded last week, Zubedad Sanayev tells him we all love you. Muslims and non-Muslims love you. That might sound an incredible thing to say to a man accused with his brother Tamerlan of carrying out the first terrorist attack on American soil since 9-11. 26-year-old Tamerlan is dead. Shot by police and run over by his fleeing 19-year-old sibling, Jahar Zarnayev was found in a boat, wounded but alive. In the phone call, his father, Anzor, tells him they will meet in heaven. We're going to be together, he says. I felt like he would scream that, you know, what's going on, you know, what's going on. He would, he would ask the world what's going on, but mama, instead he was just calming me down, you know what I mean? He was trying to calm me down, mama, you don't worry about anything. This is the military prison in Massachusetts where Jahar Zanayev is being held. Already charged, he could face the death penalty. The American authorities say he confessed to interrogators. Police sources also claim Jahar scrawled a message in the boat where he was hiding that the attack was retribution for Muslim deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan. But his parents are adamant it's a setup, though they denied to Channel 4 News reports that in the phone call he had told them he was innocent. In reality, he didn't need to. It is terrible what happened, you know, but I know that my kids did not do it. She isn't alone. The family is involved in a free Jahar website, complete with videos trying to exonerate their son. On this one, voices from across the globe speaking in their native tongue, but all in unison. Jahar is innocent, is the refrain. It's a view reflected in Dagestan, the parents' home, and on the graffitied streets of neighboring Chechnya, where years of fighting the Russian military and suffering abuse from the security forces has forged a total distrust in what the authorities say. Zubedad Zanayev says she's been inundated with calls offering support and money for their cause. They've raised $8,000 so far. The phone conversation with her son also provides an illuminating insight into Jahar Zanayev's financial situation. I was just uh, kind of asking him if we could uh, send something to him and he said, Mama, do not worry about me. I do have money. Somebody opened an account for me and uh, people send me money here and uh, I do have uh, lots of money. I'm like, how much is it? Thousand dollars. <laughs> the Zanaya parents have lived in Dagestan since they returned from the US last year. Jahar was due to visit them just three days after the bombings, they said. In the phone call, his father tells him this. We were waiting for you on the 18th at home. Not in our worst nightmares did we imagine this, Jahar. He said, Mama, passport is going to be like in my hands in a week. So, and the visa, it's not a problem, Mama. We're already taking care of it.
In fact, by the 18th of April, Tamerlan and Jahaz Anayev were prime suspects. Those photos of them just before the blasts, wearing what the FBI say were backpacks of pressure cooker bombs, led all the news bulletins. But what of claims made even by their uncle immediately afterwards, that the elder brother influenced his sibling, that Jahar was coerced? Did the parents have any insights there? Tamerlan was a proper Muslim, his mother told us, just like me. But the young, impressionable Jahar, who loved a party, needed more persuading. Tamerlan and um, I, we pray because it is an obligation. That's our religion. How would not we pray? Then what Muslim we are? So that's what Tamerlan used to tell to Jahar. You know, we are not Muslim. We cannot call ourselves Muslim if we don't thank our Allah five times a day as it's written in Quran. Jahar, she told us, is reading the Quran in prison and asking God for support. His defense team will be looking for more earthly inspiration. For nothing. Though his parents are unlikely ever to accept their son's guilt, coercion by a forceful older brother may end up Jahar's only defense.